Hey everybody, Brad the Guitologist here with another bit of hard-hitting guitar journalism, uh, also known as fake news. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I wanted to uh, document this, this really cool drawing that my daughter brought me at the end of that last video that I made. Um, this is her guitar drawing, her impression of a guitar. The body looks vaguely like the face of a shark or something, uh, or maybe a butterfly, I don't even know. But check out all the stars and the extra bits. She's so cool. She even got the number of uh, strings correct on the headstock, and look at that headstock. Look at that. Nice headstock. Good job, Izzy. But anyway, the family and I took a road trip down to Lexington, Kentucky um, this past weekend. I thought I'd show you a few of the finds that I got on that trip. We stopped at a bunch of those um, antique malls. They're kind of like large flea markets where you rent space and just leave your stuff. Um, I don't know what part of the country you guys are watching from or even overseas, so I don't even know if you have these things. But basically, it's like whenever uh, Walmart closes down or a big you know, giant Safeway Food Mart or something closes down, what are they gonna do with the old retail space, the big giant building? They usually convert it, uh, and nowadays, at least around here, into these big, flea, uh, they're basically like flea markets where you leave your stuff, so um, I can't describe it any better way than that. But I got a bunch of vinyl here, uh, Leo, some Leo Kotke. If you're not sure who he is, you need to look him up and get educated. He's, uh, he's a bad, look at my hand, it looks almost like a, reflection of her hand. Look at that. It's pretty cool. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> this is one Jethro Tull album I think I didn't have. Um, at least I don't think I had this one. I'm, this may be a duplicate, but uh, anyway, I saw it there and wasn't sure, so I went ahead and grabbed it. This, I think, is their, either their first or second album. I can't remember which. Benefit and Stand Up were like number one and two, so this is still 60s. This is when they were still kind of bluesy and less progressive. So that'll be cool. Don't laugh. Please don't laugh. <laughs> it's in good condition and it was a, it was Goodwill. It was a dollar. I think it was like a dollar or something. Uh, the Yak and Sax Man does some uh, Sunday sax. So this is like, this is uh, Peace in the Valley. and uh, But I didn't buy it for that reason. I bought it because it's signed by Boots Randolph. Uh, Boots Randolph is actually from Evansville, Indiana, which isn't very far um, away from, from me. And I lived in Evansville for a long time. And he was uh, uh, the guy, you know, the, the Benny Hill theme. That's played like, uh, you know, also, you know, you'll see it on sports bloopers and crap like that all the time too anyway that's him and I thought it was kinda cool for a dollar I mean you get a signature so whatever uh, the only Simon and Garfunkel album I did not have on vinyl Wednesday morning 3 a.m. and this in my opinion is probably their best uh, this is when they were kinda all acoustic so it's really stripped down and just uh, mellow good album and then you can't go wrong with some uh, Africa and Rosanna I mean, you gotta have that, and I did not. And here's kind of the creme de la creme of this trip. I got some Elmore James. This album is great. Uh, of course, Shake Your Money Makers on there. Shake your money maker. Shake your money maker. I think that's a later version than his early hit version, Dust My Broom. But this is a. Here's this if you want to read it and pause it or whatever. And there's that. Great album. Got some Howlin' Wolf as well from the same place. These were in one of those little antique stores, antique malls. This is one of the smaller ones though. You kind of have two different types of those antique malls. You have the big ones that are in like the big closed down Walmarts and then you have the ones that are in downtown areas like uh, used to be a drugstore or used to be a corner store. Um, kind of historic places. These came from I think one of the little antique malls in Shelbyville, Kentucky, which is between here and uh, Lexington. This is Howlin' Wolf. Looks pretty good too, although I think this is from the 70s, so this is more kind of funkish. This is when I think he was trying some different things to make money, because the whole uh, 
you know, everybody was going to dance music and funk and stuff, and I think he was just trying to stay relevant. But pretty cool silver tone right there. I've got a, had a couple of those for sale in the past. They usually have pretty high action when you get them. You got to do some work with them. And then some Oscar Peterson. This is a this is a double album, and it was really cheap. I think it was like two bucks. So for a double album of Oscar Peterson for two bucks, it's hard to go wrong. Uh, again, if you guys haven't heard of Oscar Peterson, uh, look him up extremely great piano player got this little CB uh, transceiver a little solid state thing from a Goodwill for a dollar and ninety nine cents I thought it really can't go wrong for that even if it doesn't work there might be some useful parts here I don't know gotta be a little speaker in there and here's by far the best of the Goodwill finds I got this mid-60s uh, Stratocaster uh, at a Goodwill. No, I'm kidding. It's not a mid-60s Stratocaster. <laughs> it does have the look, though, doesn't it? has that nice kind of faded, off-white, uh, cream-colored stuff going. So, But no, it's not a Strat, but I mean, for, for 10 bucks, I mean, nine or excuse me, $9.59. It's kind of hard to uh, shake a stick at, even if it is just a a Lotus. Uh, what I was thinking on this one is, you know, if nothing else, for 10 bucks, I could strip the tuners off of it, uh, strip the electronics out of it, maybe make a cigar box guitar, uh, who knows. But anyway, well worth 10 bucks. I'll take that home every day of the week. Very high action on it, and you can kind of see why. Look at the space right here. They don't even have the neck all the way on the thing so the neck angles all screwed so the actions way high completely unplayable as it is right now and maybe somebody did that on purpose so it wouldn't get uh, so it wouldn't get bought I'm thinking somebody uh, at this Goodwill didn't want this sold because I, I found it uh, on the bottom shelf of one of their shelves like stuffed under some shit so I think one of the employees was like oh man you know I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there but I'm gonna put it in the worst possible place so nobody buys it and uh, call my girlfriend in to, to come get it or something I think that's probably what they were doing and I beat them to it so anyway when the price tag came off of this thing but I found this for uh, four dollars or something like that uh, in one of the antique malls and I thought on this one if nothing else this is probably a six inch speaker um, this might make a good candidate for like one of my little cigar box conversions or something, you know, just kind of spruce it up and make it make it a little bit cooler. Uh, or, you know, this would also make a good little test amp or something uh, if I want something a little more portable than my, uh, my KB-15. <laughs> my badass custom KBA-15. Um, you know, I mean, worst case scenario, this thing is completely burned up inside and I get some knobs out of it. Who knows? But anyway, there's that. Also, at uh, the Antique Mall in Shelbyville, Kentucky, I found uh, this thing. This is an old, probably 1950s, um, oversized briefcase. And there's a couple different reasons to buy these when you see them. Uh, one of them is, uh, look, at the, look at the tweed on it. For me, this is going to be, and it's kind of sad, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to take this thing apart. Um, one side of this is going to be, for me, uh, the replacement on a back door of a 1950s uh, national guitar amp that I have that I've been looking for a back door for a long time. Or not a back door, but I knew I'd never find one of those, but I've been looking for exactly this. Uh, because what I need is this pretty much this exact kind of tweed because this is not like fender tweed this is uh, more like suitcase tweed that we see here and it's a picky kind of tweed not all of these tweeds from the 50s were the same you have to get you have to get the right stuff or it would not look right and I think this is going to do perfectly it's got the right kind of um, yellowed aged look to it and I think it's going to fit beautifully and it's a shame because this thing is in really good condition and I, um, you know I guess it would even double as a suitcase. I guess that's what it is, a suitcase. It's more like a suitcase than a briefcase. But it is kind of shaped like a brief briefcase, but oversized. You've got a place up here for your 
clothes and whatnot, but um, this actually has the guy's name on it. John Caperton of Louisville, Kentucky. It has, look at this, it still has a tag on it with his address and everything. And I actually looked him up online and checked this out. So when I researched John H. Caperton for Louisville, Kentucky, uh, there are actually three of them. The first one was, I think he died too early to have owned this suitcase. And the, and the second one, he could have possibly owned it, but he would have been really young at the time that this suitcase was made. So I think it's John Hayes Caperton II, this guy. I found his... Uh, Sadly, I found his obituary, uh, but he did li live to the ripe old age of 97, so um, I don't guess it's too sad. But he was a U.S. Navy veteran, World War II veteran, and the coolest thing, uh, he owned his own uh, company, Top Brass Incorporated, and uh, I would say he probably went on business trips with this case uh, early in his life. I found another online... Uh, newspaper clipping which was really small you could barely make it out but it was supposed to be him with like a 1930s bugatti uh that he owned because apparently he was also a car dealer uh just a cool dude uh and he was really into check this out his interests extended to restoring antique cars steam engines roadway trains antique radios and he was into genealogy and historic events so i, I feel uh, kind of a kinship to this guy already and I have a feeling with his uh, restorations uh, and his interest in antique radios and the like, uh, I think he will be quite happy with what happens uh, to his case. Okay, and this probably takes the cake for the best uh, by far of the flea market uh, slash peddler's mall finds. Uh, this is a probably late 1940s or early 1950s Stromberg Carlson uh, PA amplifier. Uh, we have two channels for microphones, microphone one, microphone two. We also have a phonograph control and a tone control here on the front. We have no bottom panel. Um, and just look at the wiring. My God. I mean, look at all that bare wire right there. This thing has just been chewed and basically left to rot. But here's what, here's what's really funny about this. Um, Look at this. Old amp works. <laughs> yeah. Right. Go ahead and plug this sucker in just like it sits and see see how long this works. But for $8.99, no joke. I was not going to leave that. As soon as I saw it, I think I gasped like a little schoolgirl. There was a lady <laughs> beside me. She was like, she was like, "What?" She kind of looked over at me. <laughs> I got a picture of the place where it sat, but I don't know if it's very good. I might include it right here, right now. Um, but yeah, this thing, uh, 5Y3, 26, 26L6, let's check this out. This thing was a find. Here we go. 5Y3, 26L6s, a 6SC7, that's probably phase inverter. Uh, two 6SC7s and a 6J5. So this thing is going to rock like a hurricane. And I think, oh, you know, I didn't even see this before. I did not even see this before. But look at this. Look at this. Oh, do you see that little bit of orange right down there? These are RCA power tubes. They look like those are black plate RCA power tubes. A pair of black plate RCA power tubes for $8.99. Hell yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's really funny that I didn't even notice the RCAs in there until just now. I didn't even know it had 6L6s in it. I didn't, had no idea what tubes it had in it. Didn't even look at that. I just saw a Stromberg Carlson sitting there for $8.99. I didn't even care if it was gutted. Um, I just grabbed it and shoved it in the cart. If nothing else, the handle's worth eight dollars and ninety-nine cents to me. Uh, you know, restoring old uh, amplifiers. I mean, you see those on a lot of amps. So, well, I mean, beyond beyond worth it. Um, but yeah, I just grabbed the thing and just put it in put it in my cart and just hope to God that you know the vendor didn't come over and say, oh, you know what? I forgot to put a couple of ones and zeros on that or you know some bullshit like that. You just never know. So I kind of 
took it and ran. Also, at, a, at I think it might have been the same antique mall. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was the same one. Found this guy. This is a voice of music. Um, what is this? Tapomatic tape machine, probably from the 1950s. It, it, it is mono, I believe. I'm fairly certain of that. We have a magic eye indicator here. Um, has one of the reels. I know this is a this is tube inside. So if I wanted to uh, strip the amp out of it and make a guitar amp out of the amp, um, I know there's at least a nice amp in here that I could uh, take out. This probably ma this makes my eighth uh, tape recorder that I have at the moment. Reel to reel tape recorders. I have like eight of these. It's either eight or nine. I'm not sure which. Um, but yeah, I can't go wrong with that. And uh, the only thing the only thing better than one of these is two of these. Uh, they were in the same booth and uh, according to the tags they came out of uh, a church and I, I read the tag at first on one of these and it said 50 bucks and I was like oh, you know I'm kind of on the fence because if I buy one of them I'm almost compelled to buy the other one but for 50 bucks I've already got seven of these bastards well, you know what do I need with nine of them but then I looked more closely at the tag and it was 50 bucks for the pair so <laughs> 25 bucks a piece, I mean, it's just, it's almost sad because I feel like a hoarder. Uh, I'm bringing this stuff home and it's gonna sit in a pile for probably quite a while before I can get around to doing something with it. But eventually I will do something with this. So and I keep telling myself that <laughs> and I keep telling my wife that. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't leave me over it. <laughs> She just hollered in from the other room. It won't be over that. <laughs> yeah, see, here's the tag where it says uh, reel to reels, both for $50 as is. Um, and I guess my mind just didn't see the both for part. So I was thinking, ah, uh, $50 a piece. I'm on the fence. So, But anyway, at least they said as is. You know, they didn't try to say, oh, it works. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe that Stromberg will work. I, I'll... I might plug it in just for giggles, just to see if they were lying. There was another tag on this thing that explained about where it came from. It was like uh, out of a church, they said. These both came out of the same church. I've got a, a microphone input, radio phono, magnetic uh, phonograph over here. Um, and I did not notice any of this before either, but it has uh, some stuff. Controls in here. We have a hum balance control, an eye sensitivity control. Like I said, these have uh, magic eyes in them. I'm not sure which tube that is. If it's, I don't know. I don't know which one that is. But I mean, even just for the magic eye tubes, which are getting pretty scarce in good condition, it was worth it probably. Uh, there's the uh, other hum balance. Okay, so this has two hum balances. That's interesting. I wonder if it is. It is stereo. Maybe just the amplifier is stereo. I don't know. But it wouldn't make sense to have a stereo amplifier unless the tape was stereo. So this thing has to be stereo. Let's see. But yeah, definitely, definitely a tube amp. It has a bias control over there as well, which is nice, and also a a uh, an auxiliary power. So this was not a cheap, this was not a cheap uh, machine by any stretch. And usually churches, you know, they will kind of splurge for decent stuff because, you know, they want it to be reliable and to last. And I would say what they were doing is they were uh, probably taping sermons onto these for people who couldn't make it to church. You know, they might have had people who were in the hospital or whatever who couldn't come to church, so they were doing this for them and they they probably would have splurged a little extra for something like that you know how church people are but I also did find this and the stuffed in the back and I think it's a I think this is a lavalier microphone it's some kind of microphone maybe it's something you stick on an instrument but it's got like a, pl a little plunger here and look, look at this it's got some little carcasses there those are like little mealy worms or something. Um, they get into a lot of, you'll see them a lot in like band instrument cases. If you ever deal in band instruments like saxophones or flutes or whatnot, those, those little guys will get in those cases and wreak havoc. 
uh, what they do is they they feast on anything that's like um, uh, cloth. Uh, you know, they'll they'll go after stuff. Uh, if it has any kind of organic material in the cloth, it'll go after it. The the pads on uh, uh, woodwind instruments and brass wind instruments are always susceptible to those little worms. And they'll also eat out the parts of the case and stuff too. If you're not if you're not careful, if you don't clean your instruments for a while, they'll they'll get in there. Uh, but there's that nice little bonus. This thing says it was what, made in Japan. Yeah, made in Japan. So this is some kind of little stick-on microphone. It's got like a little. I know that sticks on. It's got to. Yeah. Yeah. So that sticks on to whatever you want to amplify. Pretty neat. Now we're getting into a couple of the lesser finds. Uh, this guy I found, it was also at one of the antique malls. Um, but I knew instantly what it was. Uh, this, is a, this is an older style soldering gun. Uh, looks like it might have a couple of extra tips. Well, that one's worn the hell out. But it does have some, some extra tips here. Different sizes and whatnot. There's the big chisel tip. Uh, there's the one that's on it. So it has, you know, three total tips and the soldering iron. Who knows if it's going to work, um, but even if it doesn't work, I mean, for 75 cents, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't about to leave it there, and I don't think you would have either. Uh, also, uh, you're going to hate me for this. A lot of you longtime watchers to my channel are probably sick to death of this stuff, but uh, I found this. And it's nowhere online that I can see. I don't think anyone's selling it. And it's definitely not on YouTube, so I don't know. I may uh, I may upload this at some point, but for a dollar, I mean, I figure somebody who is a budding drummer might want to learn how to double bass like the pros. Terry Bazio is a badass. I mean, yeah, this this ought to be a good video if you're into drumming. So yeah, those are my finds. Uh, so now what I thought I might do to kind of spruce up this video, it's a bit light in the belt, so I thought I might uh, also show you some tips on how to shop on Craigslist, uh, or at least show you how I go about shopping on Craigslist. Because when you go on one of these trips like this, a lot of times you look ahead on Craigslist to see what's in the area because you want to kind of consolidate trips. The more stuff that you can buy in one go, um, you know, the better off you are in the long run, uh, the more money you can make uh, when you sell the stuff. So um, always look at Craigslist whenever you're going on a trip like this. But let me show you what, what I do when I'm looking at Craigslist. Okay, just for the sake of argument, let's say you live in, uh, I don't know, you live in Cincinnati and you're making a road trip over to Louisville for the day or for the weekend or something like that. Uh, what you want to do is look ahead at all of the locations in between uh, where you're starting off and where you're ending up uh, and look through all their Craigslist. The first place I usually look um, in my local is on the free section. I probably check that every day because you never know what you're going to people are going to sit out on the curb. Uh, I found all sorts of stuff on this free section that people just have given away stupid. Uh, I found a, uh, I found my Hammond organ that way. Uh, and in the back of the Hammond organ, there's a, uh, there's an AO 29 amplifier that could easily be turned into a killer guitar amp. So I mean for free, well, it ended up being 20 bucks cause I had to rent a truck, uh, or a van for about an hour. But other than that, I mean for 20 bucks for that, amp it was well worth it but I've kept the organ um, there's an old TV just stuff like that bunch of bookcases I could put my vinyl on some of those probably you'll find a bunch of TVs for you people overseas you probably never see any anything quite like this um, Americans give away a lot of stuff this here's a refrigerator this is a upright side-by-side -side refrigerator there's probably nothing wrong with it uh, unless it says there's something wrong with it Okay, the first one that can come get it works, but it's old. It probably needs to be cleaned. Nine times out of ten, an old refrigerator, you need to go, you need to turn it around and clean the coils, and usually it'll run like new after that. Um, but you know, little things like that, if you can repair them, uh, you'll be way ahead in the game. Here's a cool glass showcase if you want, if you are a hobbyist or like to collect things, that'd be cool for your living room. Um, 
you know, the free section is always cool to look in. You're probably not going to do very well if you're traveling looking in the free section because that stuff, the good stuff goes quick in the free section. you got to be on the, on the ball with that stuff. Um, but if you go to the music section on Craigslist, you can just kind of go down through here. And what I do, I just scan everything right, right off the bat. 1953 Jensen. It's a Jensen, dudes. I've never heard of a Jensen. I'm assuming they mean Gibson. But that's the first thing my eye is drawn to, and it obviously is a refinish. Uh, so 1750 might even be a bit on the high side for a refinished, and that's not the original case. Uh, so immediately I know to move on. Uh, don't spend too much time with the stuff that I'm neither going to make money on uh, or is just going to bog me down in a bunch of repairs. Here's a 2000 Custom. If you want one for just about retail, uh, there's one for just about retail. On a Custom, I would probably pay somewhere in the uh, 2000 range, 1900 maybe to 2000 range, and hope to make... Uh, couple hundred on a flip you know um, but just scanning on down you'll see a bunch of PA stuff and I'm not really you know I don't mess with P any PA stuff and there's a good reason for that uh, most of the older PA stuff it's too large um, no one wants to pack the stuff around anymore um, and most venues that are worth their salt that anyone wants to play in already has their own stuff so this stuff really doesn't sell very well. Uh, the resale on it is terrible, and you never know uh, what's going to be broken down on you when you do buy it. Here's a, my eye went to that before I started on that other rant, a 67 Tele. It has been stripped. Uh, that looks more or less legit. The neck is probably 100% legit. Uh, but it's a lot of money for a guitar that's... Uh, that's been stripped of its original finish you know seven grand I sure don't have that to invest in one piece that's the other thing too you could easily get uh, overwrought and I've done this in the past invested really probably too much in single pieces uh, of gear rather than trying to spread my money around a bit more um, because if you spread it around a little bit more you can get more steady sales rather than going for the one big thing and then getting uh, actually a, a lot less uh, money out of it so you, you're you know you're better off usually staying away from this stuff believe it or not let the you know let your vintage store have that um, and or, or let it set on Craigslist for 10 years there's a couple things that's been on here for literally probably four or five years anyway that they're just wanting too much for and they'll never sell it for what they're asking uh, you know, just scanning down, you could, I could probably even go a little quicker than this. I just want to show you, uh, what's here. A PV Predator guitar, boom, right there. That is the sort of thing I might, I might consider. And, and the reason I might consider it is right there. It's made in the USA, and I know exactly how that thing plays. That's, that's a real nice playing guitar. Uh, all these old PVs, man, you, it's hard to shake a stick at them. Um, uh, people... I mean, it's not usually people's first choice. Uh, if they're thinking about an electric guitar, they probably just want a, a Fender. Uh, but this will be every bit as nice as any of the Mexican-made Fenders you can find. And for 125 bucks, I mean, that's that'll be a good guitar for somebody. Um, I would still probably try to talk him down on the price on that because for me, I would be flipping it so. Uh, here also is very good fodder for me. Look, a 1972 Epiphone Acoustic. I think I've actually seen this one on here before, but I didn't have time to really talk to the guy about it. Uh, all original, well-made, produced in Japan. Yeah, I knew that. Um, he's been using it as a decorative wall piece, which means it plays like shit. The fretboard has pushed itself into the guitar hole, which means there's probably some structural issues right up in here. Uh, but the neck is a bolt-on. He says it has an adjustable neck. You notice he didn't say bolt-on because I, that's kind of a bad word. He probably knows exactly what it is, but he's just not telling you that it's a bolt-on. But it's a good thing that it's a bolt-on because I know the neck is going to need work. So the fact that it's a bolt-on is actually a plus. Um, but he's, he's, he's at least warning you that the strings are too far from the board to be played. But for 65 bucks, I mean, that's... You know, I would probably be able to fix this within an hour of having it, and uh, it would bring 
you know, 200 anyway, two 250, somewhere in that range to somebody uh, after it was repaired. So that's a, that's a strong contender right there. So I will I will mark that with my little star. Uh, nice nice Gibson. This has gone through a couple times now, but for 2700, um, he's at top of retail I think on that for what they would bring right now. But still a nice guitar. That's a cool reissue right there. Bison Burns Bison. Here's here's the one that's been on here for years and years. Nice guitar, original case. Uh, I don't think he has the bar, um, but he's a really stand he's a really standoffish guy. You'll get these guys, you know, don't don't pester me with offers and please don't do this. And um, actually, he's nicer here than in some of his past. He at least said please and thanks. <laughs> But for 6500 I mean, not many people have that kind of money to shell out for one guitar. It just, you know, it's a nice one, um, but it is just one guitar. And if people are going to spend that kind of money, um, you know, they tend to get stuff like that from a reputable store so that they know, uh, you know, where it's coming from. They know a little bit about it. They know it's a little bit about its history, whether or not it's been refinished or this has been replaced or yada 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 you know they don't have to worry about that stuff so and in fact it even looks like maybe those maybe those knobs right there are from a guild do those look like guild knobs to you you see how they kinda of have the split thing with the G like almost like a guild knob I don't know that looks like that might be a guild knob I didn't know I've never noticed that before but that's one of those that's been on there forever, and when I see it now, I just pass it over. And he doesn't put his, he never puts his price out here so you can see it. So, and he never has lowered the price either, I don't think. So it'll, set, it'll be a steep, still be there in 10 years, I'm sure. Uh, Sound City, vintage large amp. Uh, made in the 70s, yep. Yeah, see, this will be a monstrous amp. And it, uh, I think he said in a previous, I've seen this one before, and I think he said it has been modified already which most of these have because to be honest they don't they don't sound the greatest when they're in stock form unless they're the original um, you know kind of high watt era sound cities um, where what's his name Reeves or whatever was uh, was still building them but a lot of people get these and convert these to basically high watts so that you know that would be so if it was more reasonable I might go for it Scrolling down some more, and there's a, look at that, speak of the devil, there's a T15 with the amp and case right there. Uh, this is from a local store, uh, the George Brothers uh, store, I've been in there before and done some business with them. Um, seem like nice enough guys, so if you're ever in Louisville, you stop in there and check them out. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm for Made in the USA. Uh, you're getting the uh, guitar. Uh, the only thing is it's a three-quarter size, you know, the T15, so it would have to be the right person for $400. Uh, there's a cool old Japanese Ventura uh, Gibson copy. Probably, I think the same dudes are selling that. That's a nice amp right there, um, and I passed it over for the same reason I passed the other one over, um, that Gibson SG, because it's just there's no money there's no money left in that they're asking that's full retail and beyond I think for it um, it looks like a fantastic amp but it's a basement I mean um, it's been on here a long time and I think they'll be lucky to get to get near that for it that's just my personal opinion more power to them if they prove me wrong um, but you know that this is kinda what I do I kinda just scroll through and see what's what a uh, nice road king, but you know, for twenty five hundred bucks, there's no money in that. So just keep keep scrolling. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably do the same thing I'm doing. Uh, you know, you pick stuff up you think you can probably flip, and from time to time that can help you get uh, something that you really want. You never know. 
You pick something up real cheap and maybe the next guy will want that and he's got something you want so you can make maybe make a trade so but yeah that's more or less what I do um, and, ooh, look at there see just immediately I didn't even look at the price or anything I just saw the profile of this thing and instantly knew it was vintage so I'm gonna check it out uh, 1970s it's a base amp solid state um, but it just looks cool you know that's not something you can see at Guitar Center every day so it's worth a click it may not be worth the four hundred dollars they're asking uh, but it's definitely worth a click uh, rare and interesting find I don't I'm not sure how rare it is but you don't see them for sale all the time so maybe that it does make it rare in the marketplace There's a Showbud volume, but that's interesting too. That's that's for uh, that's for a, a slide guitar. This guy's a bit off his rocker. A Carvin. Uh, these and don't get me wrong. These are absolutely killer amplifiers. If you ever get a chance to check one of these out, if you're into like um, '80s, you know, hard rock or heavy metal or something like that, uh, Steve Vai played one of these. Uh, Frank Zappa. Uh, the guy from White Snake, I think, may have also played one for a while. Um, you know, some of the big names in the 80s were actually playing these and, um, and kicking ass with them. This is actually the amplifier. Uh, the 100 watt version, the X100B, was the amplifier in the background that Steve Vai was playing in the movie Crossroads when he was, you know, cutting heads with Ralph Macchio. That was his amp, if you look closely. Um, but the thing is, this guy wants 700 bucks, so I don't, I don't get that. Uh, and look at this. This is kind of deceiving. Carvin Series 65 watt tube power with 412 cab up here. But then if you scroll down, he says we'll sale the 412 for. Oh, he's saying he'll separate it. So, okay, I, he doesn't say he'll separate the uh, head though. So he wants five hundred dollars for the head. That's still that's still kind of on the high side. There's a PV there. I think he's selling that in another ad. Nineteen eighty nine guitar. Uh, it's and if you click on it, it's a Squire. I've clicked on it before. But see what I mean? Look at this. Look at this. Sixty six blackface champ looks nice looks clean um, you know I would have no complaints about the cleanliness of the thing it looks like it's in good shape little dent right there but uh, but for a thousand dollars this thing better have the hang tags uh, you know the original workers sweat on it you know I mean this thing just had better be tip freaking top and you know it does have a cover but for a thousand dollars for a champ, shit, I'll just build one. Probably in an afternoon. <laughs> Not to be cocky, but but this is way more my speed over here. I mean, you guys know me. I'd be way more likely to pick up something like this just for the hell of it. Uh, this Harmony Student guitar amplifier. This is solid state, but but I mean, you know, it's different. It looks cool, and I I wouldn't be out a lot of money for it. So. And plus, I might get a video out of it, something interesting to look at that would waste uh, your afternoon. Uh, now, here is a nice amp. 1970s Ampeg V4. This is the one to buy. And this, I would say, is worth every penny of what he's asking. 600 bucks is a good price for that. You're not stealing it, but uh, that's a good price. For somebody who's a player, and you want a you want a rugged roadworthy amplifier that kicks balls that one will do it killer amp yeah just make sure to bring it to me before you take it on the road for service um, but yeah you know that's pretty much what I do and I I, I wanted to show you this also I've, I've got another one already opened up over here because I saw it yesterday and uh, I had to show it to you look at this <laughs> I'm not going to say any of the words uh, here in case there are children present, but look, look at the name on the headstock. 
and it looks well made. <laughs> That's the thing. It looks well made, but look at the name of the guitar. It's a, it's a <laughs> Les Paul. <laughs> I laughed about that for a good 30 minutes last night when I saw that. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we do uh, when we're scouring Craigslist and we're going on trips. Uh, and ooh, 1966 Gibson. Well, see that, that might be a good buy right there. Uh, an ES-150. Now, not many people go for jazz boxes and not many people have four grand to spend on a jazz box like this just you know willy-nilly but if you're already a jazz guitarist and you're looking for a nice one um, this one might be the ticket I mean for four thousand dollars that's not that's not outside the realm of uh, you know one of the newer uh, top-end Gibsons either so I bet it plays like butter and would be a real good investment for somebody. Original case. So yeah, you know, that's the kind of thing if you have if you have the four grand to, to drop, you might even be able to you might even be able to talk him down to thirty seven or thirty five even, if you're lucky. Um but anyway, yeah, that's what I kind of do, uh, scouring Craigslist. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. And for now, y'all take care.